welcome to Friday's Reflections. I hope you've had a really good week. I've had a lovely week and I'm pleased to say we have a name for the baby now. Her name is Maya, which I think is really pretty. So it's lovely that um, she's got a name and she's doing really well. She's regained um, the weight she lost in hospital and put on some extra too. So all good news on the family front. And, and I've had a lovely week of... Um, of just being at home really and, and resting after a really busy and exciting time, but very full on time. I've, I've, I've got lots of my sleep back, which is great. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling stronger. And I had a lovely trip to Falmere with Sarah on Wednesday. It was beautiful. Uh, summer abundance, the, the, the grasses, the reeds, the trees, uh, the insects, lots of dragonflies, or little ruddy darters, which are bright red and just beautiful. Lots of butterflies. Uh, harder to see the birds because the trees are so full and the bushes are so full that they're, it, it's harder to pick them out. We had a lovely, lovely time. It is such a beautiful place, an oasis of peace. So if you need somewhere to just go and chill, just go there. It's, it's, it's not so big a reserve that you get lots and lots of people. So you can... I think it's a five kilometre walk, so you can go around and you, you, you hardly bump into anybody. There are benches strategically placed so you can sit and just watch water and it's just so good for your soul. So we did that and I've also really enjoyed Wimbledon. I don't know about you, but I didn't watch it from the beginning, but I think I started watching on, was it Tuesday? Um, and and I've really got into it and we watched the... Um, the semi-finals, the lady semi-finals yesterday and really enjoyed that and the, the mixed doubles finals and it was it was great and um, really interesting to see how tennis has evolved um, over the years and how they have these teams of people looking after them and how it's, it's such, you have to have such a state of mental preparedness, don't you? And um, I, we really liked Ons Jabeur and we're really rooting for her. And she had that amazing ability um, to, to come back both in the quarterfinal and the semi. And, and she, she could dig deep within her. And it really made me think about, you know, when, when times are tough, what do you do? And that then led me to a scripture, which I'll share with you. It's a scripture from the Old Testament. It's from 1 Samuel, and it's verse 30. And I'll read from, um, sorry, chapter 30, and I'll read from 1 through to 6, verses 1 through to 6. Now, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag. They'd attacked Ziklag and burned it down and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed none of them, but carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burned down and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also had been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was in great danger for the people spoke of stoning him because all the people were bitter in spirit for their sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And it's, it's that sentence that I really want to focus on. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And so there was this terrible situation. He, he must have been devastated as a leader to come back and find all the women and children gone and, and, and thinking what's happened to them. And his first reaction wasn't something must be done. His first reaction was, was grief, awful grief, that incredible crying that comes from somewhere so deep within you. 
But then, even though he, that he was in great danger and the people were going to stone him, his first reaction was to strengthen himself in the Lord. And it doesn't tell us how he did that. I guess prayer paid, played a huge part in that because he had such a close relationship with God. But that made me think about Wimbledon. And when Ange was, was was losing, you could see she was having almost a battle in her mind. Of, she was quite emotional, but she was able to go uh, uh, underneath that and and persevere. And out of that came victory. And it really made me think, what do you do when something unexpected and awful happens? How easy do you find it to strengthen yourself in the Lord? And do you recognise when when you need to strengthen yourself in the Lord? Um, that there are myriad ways in which we can do it. Obviously, we can do it by going away by ourselves or spending time on our own with God, for sure. I mean, Jesus did that, didn't he? He went away to a quiet place, um, sometimes with a couple of his disciples or, or more, but but often on his own, just to be with his father. I'm pretty sure that was strengthening him for his ministry and what lay ahead for him. There is also um, allowing other people, God's people, to strengthen you. And I know when I came back from um, being with the family last weekend, I was really, really tired on the, the Saturday, absolutely shattered, full of joy, but, but so much broken sleep. And on the Sunday morning, I thought, oh, I could watch the gathering on Zoom, I could, I, instead of going Then I thought, no, I can't, it, 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 I know it won't be the same, tired as I am, I know I have to go, and it's really interesting, because the, the service was great, it was, you know, it's wonderful, but after two people, I sat with two people, I hadn't been sitting with them through the gathering, but when I got my, my tea, I sat with them, and they didn't realise it, but they really ministered to me, and through them, I felt myself strengthened in, in, in God. And there are, uh, yeah, it, for me, another way that helps is, is to go out either into the garden or anything to do with creation and see the wonders of creation to, and to know that God spoke this world into being. And then I start to think, oh my gosh, if, he'd, if he's done this and the universe, nothing's impossible for him. And then, and then that way, I'm strengthened. So I don't know what, what, how you strengthen yourself, but the word of God is also wonderful. I don't know how easy you find it to read the Bible. Sometimes it can be wonderful and you read the words and they just jump off the page and as if they're tailor-made for you. Other times it's really tough and it requires immense discipline to read it. And uh, I don't know how good you are at that, but over the years, I've, uh, I've realised that whether or not I feel like doing it, it's essential that I do it. And whether or not I feel I've got anything from it, I will receive from it because God's word always accomplishes what he sends it for. And not only that, but it prospers. So that's really what I want to, to, to leave with you today. So if you've enjoyed Wimbledon and you've seen how they have these incredible battles within themselves, and it is like a battle of, uh, uh, it's as if they're fighting, isn't it? Their, their approach to winning is incredible and their discipline um, but watch them and think about times in your life when you felt that everything is kind of coming against you and you're, you're losing the plot or something awful has happened. And remember, above all, to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Each one of us will have myriad ways in which that happens. But, um, but please do remember that. So I'm going to end in prayer now. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for the gift of of this day. Thank you so much for the gift of, of Wimbledon actually in sport and how we can look at things in this world and we can then make a link to our relationship with you and we can learn from, from about you in so many ways and in everyday activities. And I just pray Lord for, for all who are listening that we would know when and how to strengthen ourselves in you Lord God Almighty. Um, because we ask it in your name and for your sake. I don't know what you're doing this weekend. I've got quite a, quite a peaceful weekend. I've got I've done a bit of gardening. I had some gardening catch catch up to do, and I've got some huge lilies out. They're 
beautiful white and pink. I can't believe the size of them. They, they almost don't look real, if you know what I mean. Um, I've got some houseworks. So I can spend prayer, time in prayer doing that because houseworks is quite a mindless task. Nice, but mindless. And it's often a way um, in which I can spend time in prayer. There's our, our service on Sunday, our gathering at 10 o'clock at Pansanger Church. If you're around, please do come. You are so welcome. Whether you, you've been once or twice in the past, whether you've never been or anything in between, you're really welcome. Or if you're not in Welling Garden City, then please do visit a church near you and hear more of um, the amazing word of God and his incredible love for each and every one of us. So whatever you're doing, have a really great weekend and I look forward to sharing with you next week. See you then. Mm -hmm.